Why do men hate going to church? Well, it really depends on the church you're going to. At my home church, it's really kind of a close to an even uh, mix. But I do understand it's not the case in a lot of other places. So what's going on here? What's, the prob- what's causing the problem and how do we solve it? That is the purpose of this book by David Murrow. Before I continue, it's important to note that this book is directed at pastors of small or large churches and church leaders. It is not directed at the average layperson. In other words, I'm not a church leader or anything like that. I probably wouldn't even bother with this book because it's not uh, saying anything that is worth my knowing. But I have wonderful pastor friends who would definitely appreciate some of the insights. (laughs) That's one. Two, if you are thinking that this is going to give me a whole bunch of theology, no. He is a little light on it, and according to an interview that he gave a gentleman named Aaron, he has a background in anthropology, and he does a lot of, of psychological and observation, statistics, that sort of thing. He's not really looking at a biblical theology unless you're talking about the line of Judah and the Lamb of God, which is definitely Jesus in both cases. Now, let's get to the meat of this book. This book is divided into three parts. The first part is general lies, ideas, and principles of what's going on that's driving the issue of why men hate going to church. And he does have some interesting insights, which I can understand. And I'm glad he took the time to lay the groundwork of how he's interpreting the information. He gives two charts, I mean a chart, that lists both masculine and feminine characteristics. He is aware there are some uh, floating on both sides. Now, because of some of the commentaries I've seen, no, he is not belittling guys who, who can sit still for a while and learn or read a book uh, and that. We're not a majority, but yes, we do exist. And we're not less men. Hmm. But we do all have certain characteristics. Same thing with women. What he is targeting is the tendency of church leadership uh, approaching the issue like a marketing campaign, like or some kind of thing like, okay, because I got this, I got to cater to what I think the women are wanting because they will get off their butt. They will volunteer. They'll help keep this thing running. (laughs) Hmm. And yes, that means doing whatever it is. Now, I'm going to point this one out because this is actually important information. The man is a Presbyterian. Apparently, he is Calvinist. He's conservative. Hey, he was very much involved in helping Sarah Palin with her vice presidential uh, campaign. So, yeah, he's he's not a liberal. He's conservative. And it shows uh, through some of the stuff he's saying. He goes on to point out that some of the other problem, which is true. There is a tendency to focus on, ooh, the lover of the soul and all the relationship and everything. And I did have to chuckle a little bit because, and how he, uh, in his one example, because as much as my church kind of want to do, does focus on the inner healing and stuff like that, 
I never heard anyone came up with the bright idea of two men <laughs> talking about a loving relationship with. No. Come on. All right. In part two, David Moore goes on to deal with the specifics of a typical church service. That is Sunday school and uh, what kind of sermons and everything. Um, if you're pastor, if you're a pastor and you're act and you're acting like I got to do a marketing and advertising, please take a break, a vacation. That's not what we're in church for, okay? And it might come as a shock, but women have no problem with men type topic. They're not dumb, okay? They are quite capable of you being a little rough, but be smart, be nice about it. Okay, you don't need, they're not, they're not fragile. Some of them could probably straighten your butt out faster than you think. And I know of some. No, not my current uh, lady pastor friend. No. <laughs> oh, God. Now I'm going to know if any of them actually watched this video. <laughs> now, I'm going to have some real fun. But seriously, guys, we need to think, like, tailor, if you're going to do any of that, tailor it to fit who your audience are. Yes, but don't be foolish, okay? He also points out the tendency to say, okay, let's present to the, no. Jesus is both the Lion of Judah, the one who will go after injustice, who will stand up for the oppressed, who does active. Oh, mm. Sounds good. And he's also the Lamb of God. He is tender. He is gentle. Where it's needed. But he wasn't being gentle and nice to the Pharisees because of the way they were acting. He was confrontational. So there needs to be a healthy balance in our own Christian walk because we're supposed to be imitators of Christ. So he does bring up that point good. In part three, and I'm going to wrap this up uh, now, he not only presented some uh, what he feels a solution and ideas, he tells the story of a pastor uh, who read, she was very concerned about church growth and dealing with the issue of men not going to church. The pastor understood the problem and put aside whatever political ideology or uh, theology and said, hey, I have a job to do. There are lost sheep. I have women who would love for their husband to come, but aren't going. I need to get off my butt and do something about this problem. And she went after it. Yet, yeah, I said, she, a woman pastor, got off her butt, took the, the insight that she gained from the first edition of this book and another from Dave Merle. She didn't get offended. No, no, she didn't. She got the point. She just took what was practical and appropriate for her congregation and said, okay, let me do something. Let's include the masculine type topic that are in. Let's do those things so both the men in her church would, would like, be able to say, you know what? I'm being ministered to. He's, he's helped blessing me and as well as my wife. And guess what? Her church is growing. And by the way, it's a great Methodist church up uh, in Illinois. Um, now, why did uh, Dave say that? Well, thanks to some foolish commentary. Um, I hate to break it to you guys, but according to the interview he had with uh, a gentleman named Aaron, David shared that for a very simple reason. It's not that he was endorsing women pastors. Need I repeat, he is a conservative 
Presbyterian uh, church goer. He's a Calvinist. They're not big on women pastors, okay? He shared it as a way to put a foot up the the rear of the men pa of the male pastors. That's why. <laughs> if you're gonna talk about attack, yeah, that's the attack. Do I, I agree with everything he was saying? Do I think he was spot on in all of it? Mm, not so fast. Here's one, and I'll just stick with it. Prayer. He goes on to act as if uh, men aren't that great with prayer or whatever it is. A lot of it is because he struggled with it and uh, couldn't do what his wife does. Well, I'm a guy, and I, I am very much, I've been involved in intercessionary prayer for years. And I also understand the problem for beginners. And for him, he's a beginner. He needed to learn how to pray as, as what's appropriate for him and not what uh, super spiritual soothing over down the uh, two, three, two seat down uh, can do. And that's true. And some guys, they're not going to go doing that. That's one part of prayer where I kind of disagree, but I do get it. Uh, and here's the other part. With men, I am wired as a warrior. You know, <clears throat> pick out, get your sword out, and let's kick some butt, man! See, that is, would be me. I'm more that. I have wonderful friends and sisters in Christ who are more like bridal, intercession. They want the lover part. And the, the funny thing is, we're supposed to work together. And when we do, that's when the church is at her, her best. And yes, guys, you need to keep that part in mind. <laughs> we are the bride of Christ. <laughs> and yes, lady, you're also the son of the Most High. <laughs> so we both get that fun. But yeah, this one is interesting. Take it with a grain of salt. Ask the Holy Spirit what you should take in and what you shouldn't. Let him provide you with the discernment what's appropriate for you, not what you're reading in a book. All right? I know the uh, Bible is good and you should. In fact, this lady, uh, Jen, what did she do? Oh. She institutes Bible reading, regular, uh, let's work through the scripture uh, thing. Hmm, and yes, I've seen a lot of women that say, they love it when the pastor does that, <laughs> male or female. Hmm, okay, apparently so the guys. Why did I mention that? To stop being overly sensitive to thing. <laughs> All right. Hey, I hope you enjoy, and I hope this is of value. If you get, if you're interested, there's a link to the book in the description. And hope you have a blessed day. And please share this uh, with others who may find this uh, video of value. Again, have a blessed day. See you when I see ya.